What's up everybody today? I'm going to be going through a quick video on how to make a simple box plot in R. Um, seems simple enough, but I kind of struggled with figuring out the ins and outs of ggplot when I first started using R. So I figured it might be useful to uh, just make some quick videos on creating these very basic, you know, box plots, line plots, scatter plots, things like that using ggplot2 within R. So I've got this uh, data set. I scraped this using Python, a link to that in the description below. I did that as a 50 lines or less video, um, but I'm going to be visualizing this today in R and it's just a list of 40 players. It's an NHL leaderboard from the 2019 to 2020 season uh, before it was unfortunately cut short. And these players are ranked by points. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into R and I'm going to see whether or not the number of points that you have is based on or related to uh, your position. And so I'll make box plots that just kind of stratify points by position. Simple as that. All right, so the first thing that you do in uh, R Studio is you call in the libraries that you're using. And if you don't have those libraries, you'll need to install them as packages. Um, but I've already got ggplot2, so I'll load that up. The next thing I'm going to do is load in my data. So this is a CSV file. I'm just uh, using read CSV. So I'll call that in. And just to show it to you, it's the same thing that we were just looking at as a CSV file, except now it's loaded in to R. And uh, now we can actually start making our plot. So we'll come on down. We'll call ggplot. And we're going to call in the data that we're using, the data frame that we're using, which in this case is called my data. And then we call in AES, which is aesthetics. And we're going to say x will be equal to the position. That's the, that's the name of the column for the position, right? And you can see here that that's a factor. Um, that's a, a data type factor, which is what we want for X when we're doing a box plot. And then the Y is going to be, uh, for right now, we'll say points. And then we're going to group this by position, right? Okay, so that's actually going to call in the data that we want and give it the aesthetics that we want. Now we actually need to call in the plot type. And here we're going to be using a box plot, right? The way I've got our studio set up is that we are going to be plotting here in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this just so it's a bit easier to see. And let's go ahead and run this GG plot right now just to see what it looks like. Okay, so here's our plot. And you can see along the x-axis, we have our different position. C is center, D is defenseman, LW is left wing, and RW is right wing. And uh, it doesn't really look that appealing to me. The one that I, the, one of the things that I really like about ggplot is that you can call in different themes. Like they've got these built-in themes. And you can alter these things kind of manually, but um, a lot of these just built-in ones uh, look quite nice. Like I like theme, black and white. I like this theme classic. So let's just run that. I really like theme classic, you know, it removes the background here. Uh, it just looks a bit cleaner to me. All right, so that's really nice. Um, and we've got this nice looking plot and it's really as simple as that in R. Um, but you know, one of the beautiful things about R is that it's really easy. Or one of the beautiful things about ggplot is that it's really easy to add more and more things to these, to these graphics. And let, let's say for example, you know, we like seeing um, these group level statistics, we have got the median here, we've got some idea of the interquartile range. But let's say I actually want to um, put on top of these box plots the actual individual data. Right? How could we do that? Well, in R, it's really simple. We're going to call in geom point. And actually, I'm not going to call in geom point. I'm going to call in geom jitter. And what geom jitter is going to do is it is going to call in each individual data point but it's gonna jitter it, it's gonna offset them. So if you had two, val two um, values that had the same, or let's say two individuals that had the same Y value, they would overlap with each other. Geom jitter is going to offset all of these points so that that doesn't happen. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and call that in and see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see here, I'm just gonna zoom in on this. You can see here now we've got our same x and y axes and now each of these individual data points is plotted. Now, to me, it still doesn't look that appealing. So let's go ahead and change this up a bit. Let's go into geom box plot first of all and say that line width LWD, um, let's set this equal to two. And then let's go into geom jitter and let's change the individual data points. So let's say 
size is equal to uh, three, I think usually looks pretty good, but we can change it if we need to. And then let's say that the color will be, um, uh, let's just make them gray. Okay, let's see if this looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, there you go. So maybe the line width is a little bit too much. Uh, you can change this, let's say 1.5, that might look nicer. You know, okay, so that looks pretty good. I like the way those look. Uh, let's say we wanna get a little colorful here with our individual data points. You can change it from blue to gray. And then, you know, if you were getting really creative, you could come in here and instead of coloring these all the same color, uh, you could do something like, um, you can call in aesthetics again and you could say color is equal to, um, let's say player. Let's give each individual player their, their own color. Now, it doesn't really make sense to do this in this particular scenario because the, number, the, the player doesn't repeat across the chart, right? Also, it's taking a while because it's generating this giant legend. Um, but it doesn't really make sense to color individuals based on their based based on player because they don't repeat each other. If you had repeated measures across time, and each of those repeated measures was represented uh, by its own box, um, then you might want to use the color by player because you'd want to see how an individual player changes across time. In this case, it doesn't make any sense. But it's important now that I'm looking at this to point out something. You know, when you add in geom jitter, well, one of the things that geom box plot does automatically is it plots outliers. So you see this outlier point here is actually the same as this point here. And you can miss that if you're not really looking out for it, but you can change that within geom box plot. So before we call in a line width, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call in outlier color, and I'm gonna set that equal to white. And then down here, you know, the other thing, I'll just point this out is we can remove the legend by just calling in theme and we'll say legend uh, dot position and we'll just say none. So let's run this. That, that should uh, remove those outliers or at least color those outliers white so they don't show up twice, which you can see it did. And it also removed that legend, right? As I was just saying, it's kind of pointless to color uh, in this particular plot, it's kind of pointless to color per player. So I'm just going to change this color um, back to, uh, you know, we could just do, we could just do black. Okay, so there you go. And for the sake of time, you know, I'm not going to go through and show you how to change uh, legend or axes, rather the, the titles or the numbers. That's all stuff that you can put into theme down here. And if you just Google search ggplot2, you know, axis labels help, uh, you'll see this kind of stuff. But, um, you know, the purpose of this video is really just to show you how to take data, visualize it as a box plot um, grouped by some variable, and hopefully it's helpful. All right, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me uh, a like, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be trying to put out a few of these uh, just basic data visualization using R videos. And I really hope they're useful. If you have any suggestions or you'd like to see me uh, try to do something you've been struggling with, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to everybody. Um, if not, you know, that's fine. I'm, I'm hoping that these really help people. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. You can find my academic work on ResearchGate. You can find me on LinkedIn. And of course, you can keep watching me here on YouTube. All right, until next time, keep coding.